Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to convert these colonial marines from the aliens glorious day in the core into these painted examples here. This is all the steps I used along with all the paints that I used. You don't have to follow mine but this is how I did it. First up I primed them. I used a quite a light prime. This is just a, a tan colour just because I knew I was going to be putting some other colours on top. This would keep them nice and clear when the painting went on very simply done with an airbrush. The next thing I went online and I actually found a couple of pictures of the Marines uniforms. If you search for Marine Colonial Marine props you'll find quite a lot. Uh, I started off using the green grey for their overalls. This was just the basic colour. If you look very closely at the props this is uh, close to the colour uh, that they are. It's probably not exact but you can probably find your own colours for this. I then give this a wash of Agrax Earthshade. This is by Games Workshop, the best wash on the market in my humble opinion. Uh, it's quite brown, but it gets really into all the nooks and crannies of all the creases of all the uniforms. And I did this on all the bits and pieces that you can see. So I just worked my way through each and every one of these. At this point, we've only really got uh, the legs and the arms showing anyway on the Marines in particular. I use Agrax for a lot of shading uh, throughout this process because uh, it is a nice shade. I then went back and dry brushed the green grey over the top of the uniforms once the Agrax was nice and dry. This is just to pick out some of the creases and things on the uniforms. At this point you don't really have to be neat because we're going to be painting over all those other places that's a tan anyway. It's up to you how neat you want to be. I generally am not. I just use a small stiff brush for this. And then we start painting the actual camo itself and it's kind of splodgy uh, and I'm using here the uh, Vallejo's Brown Violet. This is the first colour. I used three different colours on the uh, the camo itself. I think there is three, maybe four different colours but at a distance you can't really see and it all blends into one anyway. So you could actually pick out a colour that looks similar to that and just paint it in that anyway. But I, I went ahead and did all the different splodges of uh, the camo. This one was the USA Olive Drab camo. This just on the top of the previous blobs and again just on all the bits and pieces you can see which are the overalls of the Marines. Quite nice and easy really. And then we move on to the armour and this is slightly different again so we were using Vallejo's uh, Reflective Green. You can see on the photo on my uh, on my phone there in the background that is Frost's armour, another prop from the film itself so I was just following that and I think there may be four different colours on this but I only painted three. Again you could really do this as uh, as precise as you wanted to. I wasn't too bothered because it all merges into one at game distance anyway. So we paint this on everything so the arm, on the legs, on the chest, all those bits and pieces and we come back again once this is dry and I went over and did the boots with the Vallejo black brown. It was difficult to actually find a, a photo for the boots. Uh, there is one clear picture of them I think with uh, Hicks wearing them but it's not great uh, and they're quite a, a blackish brownish colour. So this may not be perfect but again it does it for me. I also painted uh, the gloves that some of the characters are wearing with this and some of the other bits and pieces of detail as well. And then we went back with the Vallejo Flat Earth. This was for the camo again on the armour, once the armour had dried. So again, just splodges, more like lines actually than splodges on this because if you look at the prop uh, photos that are online, you'll see that they're actually quite long lines rather than splodges on this. It's quite a different camo to the, uh, the overalls. But as I keep saying, you can do this as detailed or not as you like. Flat brown was the next colour. This went on top of the flat earth and also on top of that reflective green. Again in stripes. This just really uh, added that extra dimension to the the armour, the green armour. Uh, and it looks quite, quite good from a distance, which is what I want really, a gaming distance. And then we go back, as I say, Agrax Earthshade, ink wash all of that armour. Uh, we just do uh, get get that over everything, make sure it gets into all those nooks and crannies. And then that's it. I didn't bother doing any highlights on the armour at all. I just left it at that. And then I started working on the flesh. Unfortunately, I didn't get a very good picture of this, but you uh, shot of me actually painting this. But I used uh, saddle brown to paint all the 
uh, Caucasian flesh at least. Uh, you can see the marines in the background there have all got it painted on them. This is quite a reddish brown. Uh, you could use anything you want. I was just using this because it's, it's quite good for a flesh tone undercoat. And then using the Vallejo uh, Sunny Skin Tone, I went back and painted over all the high areas of the flesh. So this is like the muscles, uh, biceps, triceps, all that stuff on the arms, anything you can see that's basically sticking up. And also the faces, so it would be noses, the forehead, the cheeks, uh, chin, or you know anything that you basically want to cover up. You, you want to kind of go over the brown as much as possible, but not completely, so that you've still got a little bit of brown as a base showing through in some of the shadows. And then the flesh was completely washed in Seraphim Sepia, uh, another Games Workshop uh, wash. This one's quite browny orangish, but it's quite good for flesh, so it worked here pretty well. I will go back and do highlights on, fle on the flesh later on, but for now I just wanted to get this wash on there and uh, get that bit finished. And then we went back and did the cloth uh, equipment. So this is some of the pouches on the back and uh, pistol pouches and also the shotgun pouch that Hicks has. And this is a USO uniform. It's not perfect, but it's about the closest colour I had to the ones that I found are the props. It's quite a, a greyish green, but I also I just washed this in Agrax Earthshade and didn't give it a uh, any any highlights anyway. So once that was dry, and it looks about right for me, you know. Again, we're looking at gaming distance. Doesn't uh, doesn't really particularly affect me too much. Then it was onto the pulse rifles. So a few of the characters are wearing uh, carrying pulse rifles, and if you actually look again at the props, uh, they're two different colours. The large plastic lumps on them basically are a stone grey colour, and that's what I painted on these. I think there's three in this this basic set of pulse rifles. Uh, the rest of it I painted uh, gun metal, but I did that later on. So I just based up, uh, just checked the the prop photos and made sure I was painting the right bits in stone grey. And as I say, I went back and then filled in the rest of it in gun metal. Gun metal also for Vasquez's. Um, big gun, uh, Gorman's pistol, parts of Hicks shotgun, uh, and any, oh yes, and uh, Frost's flame weapon as well. So I just did all those in a basic Humbrol uh, gun metal. You could use whatever you want that you use for guns. They're, they're quite dark in the film. If you, again, if you look at the photographs, they're quite dark um, features on these. So you could go almost to black with the, with the guns. And then I turn my attention to the base. Uh, this is Vallejo's oily steel because they are on what look like metal bases, basically, you know, on, on metal panelings. So I just filled this in. This was quite an easy, simple job. Did this through all the all the figures. Make sure you get right into those recesses. Uh, we are going to fill them in with wash, but it's better just to get right into those recesses in the first place anyway, so you don't have to bother too much with the wash. But yeah, this was uh, a nice easy job uh, and it, the, doing the base is important because it really brings the figures together. So it's well worth spending a bit of time just doing this uh, and not leaving them in any base colour. And as I said, I went back and finished off the flesh at this point. This is with tan yellow. I prefer this to uh, sunny skin tone. It's more of a, uh, a much better colour for Caucasian flesh. So again, I just went back, touched up all the highlight areas, noses, uh, cheeks, uh, chins, some of the muscle, musculature that you'll see on the figures. And that again just brought another layer onto that, um, onto the already done flesh. And Nuln Oil is another great wash. This is by Games Workshop, but it's black. So I use this for the metal parts on weapons or any of the other machine parts that they have. I prefer Agrax when it's, uh, when it's a human or skin or flesh, and I prefer null Oil when it's a, uh, a machine or something technical. And then we turned our attention back to the base. Uh, this is a rust wash by Flory Washers. This is a clay wash. This is really nice. Uh, I got the full set of these. They're well worth buying, and I've, I've never looked back having bought them. Uh, quite a few years ago that I swear by them literally daub this on 
in any quantity you want pour a bit into the top of the cap there as i have done and just get it all over that base absolutely cover it in it looks quite bright at this point but the beauty is once it dries it actually dulls down quite a lot and you can see here how nice it looks when it's over the top of that oily steel however i've not finished with the uh with the base just yet because i then washed it again with null oil just to really dampen it all down a bit what you can do if you wanted to is just reactivate that uh, flurry wash and wipe some of it off to leave the rust in the recesses i didn't i literally give it a null oil wash and uh, left it at that i thought that was it's quite a nice rusty look uh, for them tramping about at hadley's hope finally for the marines i then picked out their names in white uh, just using a tiny brush and going over the top because this is quite high uh, you can it's quite an easy task to do you just have to brush over the top and just make sure you can see them this just helps in a game don't have to do it if you don't want to i just wanted it to to look nice uh gorman was different i'd originally painted him uh similar to the marines but i looked again at his his stuff and his uh, overalls are slightly different he is actually wearing uh, a different kind of marine uniform and this is a uh, us dark green that i painted them in i gave him an agrax earth wash and then dry brushed it back in that same base color again so that was very simple ripley again is wearing a different color uniform because she's got overalls from the um, wayland corp so she is actually uh, this the closest i found to this was the second world war german field gray and she's pretty much just wearing overalls so i painted it all in her overalls in this and then gave her a white t-shirt underneath uh, and again agrax earth shade with a bit of a dry brush and then finally we got newt uh, newt again was slightly different i uh, painted her with gray green not the green gray that i painted the marines with so this is slightly bluer in color again looking at her prop colors or photos from the uh, from the film itself this is as close as i could get from the colors that i have you might be able to get a better bluish color but again did this washed it in agrax and dry brushed she was then uh, given a vallejo buff paint for the uh, jumper that she's wearing uh, this is quite scruffy in the film obviously because she's been living underground for quite some time uh, so that got an agrax earth shade the helmet she's wearing i painted exactly the same as the other marines helmets so just be sure that you do the same thing because she is wearing a marines helmet in uh, in this figure and then finally it was just a case of uh, varnish un, uh, spray paint for every single one of them uh, this is windsor and newton's professional artist spray the best matte spray on the market as far as i'm concerned never had an issue with it and i've used it for years uh, great stuff buy some and that was it they're complete uh, as i say they may not be perfect to the films but for me they're good enough uh, the different bits and pieces stand out well enough i'm quite happy with how they've turned out uh, well thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this please subscribe for more aliens videos in the future